In our last tutorial, we showed how we can specify different types and use TypeScript to make sure we're passing correct data to our functions. Today we're going to look into using multiple types for a single variable, what to do if we want a variable to be able to be undefined, and a convenient but dangerous escape hatch that's available. Let's dive in. By this point, hopefully, you're pretty comfortable with the idea that you can say, hey, this function parameter should be a string, and expect to get an error if you pass it, say, a number or a boolean. What happens, though, if we want to write a function that can take two types of variables? Here's a function that might work that way. Save that. As you can see, we're passing a single variable, names, but we're allowing it to be either a string or an array of strings. The TypeScript syntax for arrays is pretty straightforward, unless the array contains objects, but we'll get to that. For now, you can use string brackets, boolean brackets, number brackets, and so forth. Just like up here. Let's see if that compiles. Spoiler alert, it will. And let's run it. As expected. Generally speaking, I try to keep my use of TypeScript or functionality like that to a minimum, but it definitely comes in handy, especially when working in React, where you're dealing with a lot of third-party libraries that have all kinds of functionality. Getting into making TypeScript play nicely with React is way outside of the scope of this tutorial, but might be a subject of a future course if people are interested. Armed with this understanding of how to use the pipe to create an OR in your type definitions, often referred to as type defs, you might think you'd do the same thing if you wanted to allow a variable to be undefined, like this. Save that. This will compile. And it'll work. Sort of. But what happens if we remove this undefined? I'm not going to bother to compile because VS Code will tell us. It's expecting an argument, even if the argument is undefined. Now. Obviously, you'd rather that function compile correctly if you just pass no parameters, rather than having to actually pass undefined to it. To make a parameter truly optional, so that it can either have a value or be any of a number of falsy values in JavaScript such as undefined and null, we use this syntax. Save, compile, run it. And as you can see, we get six, and hey, I need a name. All you need to make the function parameter optional is that question mark. Let's say you want a function that can take any kind of variable as a parameter. TypeScript's helpfully named any type allows you to do just that. Observe. I don't know if you noticed, but code just showed me that there was a TypeScript error there, which reminded me to put the question mark up here. Let's see how that works. Save, compile, run, it stringifies whatever. This can make using any very tempting, especially if you're struggling to get your type defs working properly. Of course, there's a problem. It'll allow data through that could potentially break things and give you JavaScript errors. Observe. So, that's going to compile. Watch. No errors. As you can see, by using any here, we've essentially circumvented TypeScript entirely and gone back to the original JavaScript problem we were encountering in the first tutorial in this series. Let's run it. 4, 24.8, and uh, not a number. Now, don't get me wrong. There are places where any makes sense. For example, when you're dealing with incoming unknown data. In that situation, you're going to want to use any and then deal with the various possibilities manually by writing code that checks the type of the data and does stuff with it accordingly. When you're working with your own code, though, and have complete control, any should rarely be necessary. So, when it comes to basic JavaScript types, there's one big elephant in the room we haven't covered. Objects. 
Creating type defs for objects requires using what are called TypeScript interfaces, and we're going to dive into those next tutorial. See you there!